The story unfolds in Shinjuku City, where a girl named Isumo has just completed reading her beloved book. She yearns for a more romantic life like the one depicted in her story. However, she contemplates ending her own life. Suddenly, a man named Andy warns her about the dangerous spot she's standing in. Isumo insists that he keeps his distance, claiming that he might contract an incurable disease if he touches her. Despite her warning, Andy approaches her and allows himself to be stabbed. This action sends Isumo into a panic as he grasps onto her. He reassures her that he has never heard of a deadly disease transmitted through touch. Isumo discloses her ability to bring bad luck to anyone she touches. Unexpectedly, Andy falls and is run over by a train. Isumo blames herself for the tragic incident, believing that she caused his death. However, to her disbelief, Andy's head suddenly flies towards her and his body rapidly regenerates. Andy considers himself fortunate to have met Isumo, but she responds by delivering a painful punch and attempting to flee. Despite her efforts, Andy grabs hold of her, revealing that he is undead. About to inquire further about her ability, Andy notices the approaching police and flies away using his blood to navigate the city. He takes Isumo to the top of a building where she attempts to escape. Andy intervenes stating that she cannot leave until she answers his questions. Isumo warns him that he might trigger her ability, but Andy assures her that he is only touching her clothes, thus preventing any adverse effects. She pleads with him to release her, but upon realizing the perilous height, she hesitates. Andy insists that she answers his questions, but Isumo refuses, expressing a preference for death. In response, he threatens to throw her off the building, frightening her into compliance. Isumo reveals that the origins of her predicament trace back ten years ago, when her parents were about to embark on a business trip. They embraced her with a hug before boarding the plane. However, just as they were about to take off, the planes unexpectedly exploded, resulting in the death of everyone on board. After the incident, she discovered her unique ability and blamed herself for her parents' demise. To prevent harm to others, she started concealing her body with clothing. Suddenly, Andy surprised her with a hug, expressing his desire to test her ability. Tragically, a crate fell from a plane and crushed his body while she attempted to flee, causing her to lose her balance and fall off the building. This incident instilled panic within her, revealing her unpreparedness for death, and she broke down in tears. Luckily, Andy caught up to her and rescued her from certain demise. He assured her that he wouldn't let her die because she might hold the key to ending his eternal life, suspecting she was hiding something about her ability. They returned to Andy's hidu, where he instructed her to remove her clothes aiming to explore her ability further. She resisted and tried to escape, worried about being seen naked. However, she got caught on a nail, causing her hat to fall off and exposing her incredibly long hair, which she had never cut to avoid endangering a hairstylist's life. Surprisingly, Andy revealed his past as a stylist and proceeded to cut her hair, knowing that her ability wouldn't be triggered until he released his grip. He assured her not to worry, reminding her of his undead nature. When he finished, she was genuinely pleased with the outcome. Andy eagerly anticipated the consequences, having held onto her for 15 minutes, but his excitement abruptly ended when a group of men appeared, slicing off his head. They thanked her for assisting them in capturing Andy, sealing his head in a container and restraining her with handcuffs. They explained that their task was to control individuals like her, known as negators, although she had no understanding of what they meant. They discover that Lee is aware of her ability, so they use clothing as a protective measure. Lee discloses their plan to exploit her ability, mentioning that Andy had intended to do the same. However, she rejects the idea emphasizing that Andy is different from them. Lei warns her to be careful with her words and threatens to kill her if she doesn't cooperate. She starts blaming herself for Andy's fate, but still expresses gratitude to Lee for cutting her hair. Suddenly, one of the men is struck by lightning, leading them to question if it's due to his ESS ability. After considering that she never touched the man, they conclude it's not her doing. However, Isimo contradicts them, revealing that they are mistaken. In a surprising turn of events, Andy breaks free, and the men prepare to attack him while their leader describes him as a weak fighter. Andy reveals that he had sealed off his memories to prevent his brain from becoming overwhelmed with over a century's worth of recollections. By unlocking his memories, he regains his fighting abilities and defeats the enemies. He determines that the appearance of the enemies was purely coincidental, and the lightning bolt was a result of Isumo's ability. Andy returns the seal to its place, and the leader threatens to kill Isumo unless Andy surrenders his head. Andy complies by slicing off his own head and throwing it to the leader, but Isumo manages to break free. In a surprising moment, she kisses Andy, indicating that they are about to face extreme misfortune. Although the leader remains unaffected, Andy is thrilled and instructs Isumo to escape 
While he keeps the leader occupied, Isumo manages to exit the building, but a meteor falls, causing a massive explosion that throws her off. Initially believing Andy to be dead, Isumo is overjoyed when he emerges from the rubble. After surviving, Andy suggests to Isumo that they mate, believing it will bring about even worse luck. However, Isumo refuses, recounting a time when she kissed her disliked grandfather, resulting in only a sprained ankle. She concludes that the effect of bad luck intensifies when she cares for someone. Isumo warns Andy that if he forces himself on her, she will hate him and be unable to give him the death he desires. Consequently, Andy changes his plan and promises not to let her die until she falls in love with him. They visit an armory where Andy equips Isumo with heavy armor, claiming it will protect her from their enemies. Andy reveals that they are known as negators who defy the world's rules and an opposing organization of negators is pursuing them. He believes they have little chance against the enemy, suggesting they escape. They attempt to flee on a bike, but Isumo realizes Andy has no specific destination in mind. Despite her concerns of being captured, Andy assures her he won't let her die until she falls in love with him in order to receive the most devastating stroke of bad luck. Isumo believes she will never fall in love with him since she currently dislikes him. Suddenly, a crack appears in the sky, identified by Andy as a warp gate. The sky shatters as the enemy void charges toward them, throwing Isumo away. Witnessing Andy being crushed, she rushes to his side, but realizes she is moving backward and collides with a man named Shen, discovering she cannot move her legs. Shen informs Void that he apprehended her. However, Void instructs him to kill her, revealing their mission to eliminate Isumo and capture Andy. Shen expresses reluctance to carry out the mission and starts asking personal questions. Suddenly, Andy swiftly recovers and prepares to attack Void, but he inexplicably stops moving. Void strikes him, but Andy realizes he can move again, suspecting Void possesses the ability to immobilize him. Isumo speculates that Shen was the one who halted Andy, but Shen disagrees, stating that Void paralyzed him while she manipulates her own will. Void strikes Shen, prompting an immediate counterattack from him, as he realizes he can move right after being hit. They continue exchanging blows, while Isumo ponders if the organization will relentlessly pursue them. Shen discloses that they have become high-priority targets due to a meteor striking the building, resulting in numerous negators pursuing them. Isumo discovers that Shen and Void are also negators and wonders why they are not being hunted. Shen explains the existence of a group called the Yunun, consisting of 10 exempted negators who are not pursued on the condition that they carry out missions. Isumo contemplates joining the Union, but Void informs her that all seats are filled and prepares to attack her. However, Andy intervenes and suggests that joining the Union would be a great idea. He proposes eliminating two negators to secure their spots and assures Isumo of her safety under his